below the water. This is one of the greatest uh, salmon rivers in the world here on the Fraser River, and we're happy to see you all today. I got started in public service uh, because I was wanting to have more jobs, more opportunities for working families in our community. I was a working mother myself, and I was transiting down to uh, Vancouver every single day, and I saw all of my colleagues and par par other parents' friends doing exactly the same thing. So uh, I've been fighting for people in this community, and we know over this pandemic, it's become very, very difficult for families to get by. Uh, Jagmeet Singh and the NDP team have been working hard for you, and I see uh, uh, Jagmeet is, is here today. I want to welcome you. Uh, welcome, Jagmeet, to Community Coquitlam. Please, Jagmeet Thanks so much, uh, everybody. I'm really excited to be here in Port Moody, Coquitlam. Uh, you just heard from Benita Zarillo, an incredible voice for the community, city councilor, but someone who's going to be an amazing voice in Ottawa. Can't wait for Benita to join me in Ottawa. So today we're at Novo uh, Textiles, and I have to give a big shout out to Jason, owner and president. Uh, this is exactly the type of business that we want to support. When we saw the pandemic hit, and some of the most important important equipment that we needed to stay safe, to keep our workers safe, we realized was not produced in Canada. And we were at the whims of global logistics. We could not get the equipment we needed. And we were lucky that companies like Novo and innovators like Jason thought, you know, we can start producing some of this equipment here in Canada. But it shouldn't have to be that people scramble to solve this problem. What we need to do is make sure we are investing and supporting local manufacturing in Canada, particularly manufacturing equipment that will keep workers safe. So what we are committed to doing, what New Democrats are committed to doing, and what I want to announce today, is that New Democrats would invest in making sure we produce and manufacture critical equipment like what Novo produces in Canada. We need to support businesses like Novo to ensure that they can expand and grow, that we help them with local, national, Canadian exports distribution of their equipment, but also uh, allow them to be exporters as well and assist them in putting up to global markets. That's what New Democrats believe. We need to be able to produce and manufacture in Canada. For years and years, we've seen liberals and conservatives allow manufacturing to be eroded to the point that we were not producing some of the most important equipment that we need in our own country. We want to stop that trend and make sure we support and invest in local companies so that we can produce the equipment we need in any eventuality in the future. Donc, euh, aujourd'hui, ce que je veux annoncer, c'est euh, c'était pendant la pandémie qu'on on a eu besoin d'équipements de protection. On a, on a appris que cet équipement n'était pas produit au Canada. C'était un grand enjeu, c'était un grand défi parce que au moment donné qu'on a vu qu'on a besoin de cet équipement, on a dû euh, demander l'équipement des autres un grand délai pour avoir l'équipement nécessaire pour protéger nos travailleurs et travailleuses de premier ligne. C'était un grand problème. Et c'était un problème causé par le fait que les, les gouvernements libéraux et conservateurs, depuis des années, ont laissé le secteur de, de fabrication au Canada euh, quitter le Canada. Et on était dans une situation difficile à cause de ça. Ce qu'on veut faire et ce que je vais annoncer aujourd'hui, le gouvernement néo-démocrate investira dans les compagnies locaux pour qu'on puisse produire l'équipement de protection et les autres équipements nécessaires dans notre pays. C'est quelque chose d'essentiel. On veut appuyer nos, nos entreprises locaux et euh, ce qu'on veut faire, c'est de s'assurer que les autres riches, les grandes compagnies payent de juste part donc pour qu'on puisse investir dans les compagnies comme Novo ici, pour appuyer les compagnies locaux qui euh, investissent dans la production d'équipements nécessaires au Canada. Donc, euh, merci encore uh, pour votre présence. Thanks so much for being here. And with that, I'm ready to take any questions you might have. Merci. Thank you. Any questions on the floor? I have Olivia Stefanovic from CBC News. Good morning, Christine. I would like to ask you about the situation. Should Canada and other NATO allies be engaging with the Taliban? And 
heard Liberal leader Justin Trudeau call the Taliban a terrorist organization. Do you agree with that? It's really clear that the Taliban is a terrorist organization, and uh, it's a com it's an organization that we should not be uh, we, we should not recognize. It's clearly a terrorist organization. They put people's lives at risk, and and I just have to take a moment to express how horrifying what's going on in Afghanistan is. We have seen just incredibly scary images coming out of people in desperation trying to flee what they know is likely death or severe persecution. To see those images of people clinging to airplanes and people that are so desperate to leave that they're putting their lives at risk really paints a picture of how dangerous things are. I particularly want to highlight how important it is for Canadians, for, for us as a nation, to support our allies. There were people that put their lives at risk in Canada, in, in Afghanistan, to support Canadian troops. And in Canada, we have a responsibility to support those troops and evacuate those allies in evacuating and providing any help we can to those that put their lives at risk to support us and our troops. On mandatory vaccinations, you said you'd like to see progressive discipline for those in the public service who refuse a shot. What exactly do you mean by that? What does that look like? So first and foremost, the reason why we believe in vaccination is because we want to protect people. And Canadians want to protect each other. That is something very Canadian, that we want to take care of our neighbors. And so when we look at this question of, of mandatory vaccination, it's really about protecting those that can't protect themselves. And the reason why we set the deadline for Labor Day is because we are really thinking about kids. Children under 12 cannot get vaccinated. They simply can't right now. And so every adult that gets vaccinated means we are making it easier for and we're protecting the people around us, particularly kids. And, and in that case, that's why I strongly believe in, in a mandatory vaccination. And what that looks like is going to be that we're going to say for to work in a certain employment federally and federally regulated that you need to be vaccinated. Now, people have the choice not to get vaccinated, but there will be consequences for those choices. Our goal is to protect people. Our goal is to protect and keep people safe. And that's why we are encouraging people to get vaccinated. So what are the consequences of that? So the consequences, uh, we work with, uh, we follow through on the collective agreements and make sure that we're following through on collective agreements. But at the end of the day, if someone doesn't get vaccinated in places where we know that we put people at risk and it's vital to get vaccinated, then uh, they would not be able to continue working in those places. People have the choice not to get vaccinated, but it is essential that we set up uh, every step possible to encourage people getting vaccinated. Donc, uh, um, notre position pour uh, la vaccination uh, mandatoire, c'est oui, on, on veut s'assurer que tout le monde soit vacciné. Et la raison pour laquelle, c'est parce qu'on sait, si on est uh, vacciné, on protège les gens autour de nous. Et en particulier, je pense des enfants. Des enfants de moins de 12 ans qui ne peuvent pas être vaccinés eux-mêmes, c'est pour protect, protect, protéger ces enfants qu'on qu on veut être vaccinés. Donc, ce que, ce que je dis, c'est pour uh, les travailleurs uh, qui, qui ont peur uh, créer une, une vaccination mandatoire, ils ont un choix, mais s'ils ne décident pas d'être vaccinés, on va avoir des conséquences. Et uh, donc, on va suivre les, les accords collectifs, on va travailler avec les syndicaux, mais effectivement, tous les travailleurs doivent être vaccinés. Uh, C'est important, en particulier au niveau fédéral, uh, dans notre juridiction, on veut s'assurer que tous nos travailleurs et travailleurs soient vaccinés. Next. Oh, yes. OK, yes, yes. Um, donc, uh, uh, on ne rec rec reconnaît pas uh, les talibans, parce que les talibans, c'est uh, comme un gouvernement, parce qu'on reconnaît les talibans comme une, une groupe terroriste et c'est un groupe qui, qui euh, a, on a beaucoup peur pour euh, ce qui va passer pour les gens. Euh, on a vu des images horribles surtout d'Afghanistan, de ce qui se passe. Euh, c'est une situation vraiment horrible. C'est un grand danger ce qui se passe et c'est pourquoi on exige euh, du gouvernement et tous nos alliés de faire tout ce qu'on peut pour euh, aider dans l'évacuation de nos alliés, des de gens qui ont aidé nos, nos armes, euh, nos forces canadiennes. Et c'est vraiment une situation horrible à ce qui se passe. Et j'encourage tous nos alliés à travers le monde de faire tout ce qu'on peut 
pour uh, protéger les gens qui essaient de, de quitter le pays. Next question, we have Annie Bertha Oliver from CTV News. Hi there. So my question is about this announcement today. So we're in a facility that's obviously manufacturing PPE and 95s. They've made that shift. For companies who have not yet made that shift, what is the, uh, the reason that they should under this new NDP plan? What specific benefits will they get to do it? And for companies that already have made the shift, how are you going to ensure that they're still going to be able to keep up support when inevitably, and hopefully sometime soon, the demand for PPE for things like gowns and respirators drops substantially? Uh, it's a really important question. And, and what I want to highlight is, first of all, we really have to acknowledge the incredible ingenuity and courage that it took and the initiative that it took companies like Nova Textiles and Nova Textiles and, and, and Jason as, as the leader, the work that he showed, the leadership that he showed to, to make that pivot has really helped out a lot of people and we can't highlight that enough. Uh, so what we want to do is a couple of things. First off, for companies that have made the shift like Novo, what we would do is invest in it, helping companies expand to other jurisdictions in Canada, so other provinces and territories, and assist them in expanding globally so they can export. So providing that, that really uh, focused attention to supporting local businesses grow and expand. We would also uh, develop plans to assist other companies that want to make that transition with federal investments that support and encourage that manufacturing. We know that there may be a time that you know we get past this pandemic and we stop thinking about the immediacy of the and the urgency of it, but we know that we will always need to have protective equipment. So we need to make sure Government policies are encouraging that ongoing production that allow these companies to continue to produce because we never want to be in a situation where we find ourselves without the essential equipment we need to keep workers safe in a pandemic like we found ourselves in. So to prevent that, we want to make investments in the long term so that companies can continue to produce that in Canada. Okay, thank you. And my follow-up is on vaccines. It seems like each party has a slightly different stance on vaccinations and whether they should be mandatory. And I'm wondering if you have any concern that the debate this campaign will potentially politicize uh, an issue that's already so divisive and so controversial and sensitive. I am concerned about that. And, and, I, and, I, and I hope what we, can, what we can do is we think about what is the purpose of this. And there is a moment here where we can come together. And I really want to find, us, find a way for us to come together. It's about keeping people safe. And I think when we speak to people, we speak to Canadians, they want to keep each other safe. There are, there are Canadians that agree that that makes sense. When you put it to people, would you do whatever it takes to take care of your neighbors? Would you be a part of an initiative to make sure that we keep kids safe? People want to do that. And so I think we need to put more emphasis on, on trusting that Canadians want to do what's best, but we need to provide people with more education, more awareness, and more transparency. I think when we answer the questions that people have, we provide really good reasons why we need to do this. I really believe that Canadians want to do everything they can to do their part to fight this pandemic. So that's something I think we've got to keep in mind. I hope we can really come together around the fact that there are public health experts that provide science-based, evidence-based reasons for us to do certain things that will keep us safe. And I want us to really believe in that instead of getting caught up in what is popular, what it mean is it's going to get people more votes. I really just want to do what's best for people, what's based on the evidence, and I believe in my heart that Canadians want to do that as well. We just have to provide them with the tools to make the best decisions. Bonjour. Bonjour. Sur l'annonce du jour, oui. euh, c'est important de fabriquer au Canada, effectivement, mais l'économie mondiale, M. Singh, ça marche beaucoup avec les multinationales aussi. Vous dites quoi aux gens qui disent que ce pas réaliste de, de, de les exclure ou de ne pas les aider parfois? Je, je pense que dans, dans une question de, de ce qui s'est passé dans la pandémie, on a vu que le système a été brisé. Notre système économique qui, qui a créé, qui, en fait, qui fait en sorte que tous nos, nos équipements nécessaires étaient fabriqués dehors du, du Canada, c'était une mauvaise décision. Et on a vu l'impact de ça. Donc, je veux régler ça. Je veux encourager la production, la fabrication d'équipements au Canada. Et les Canadiens sont d'accord. Ils savent que c'était un, ils savaient que c'était un problème pendant la pandémie, le fait qu'on on ne produit pas, on ne fabrique pas l'équipement nécessaire dans notre pays. On veut régler ça et on veut appuyer les entreprises comme Novo qui l'a fait, mais on veut aussi encourager les autres compagnies de, de produire et de, de fabriquer 
ici au Canada et on peut le faire. J'ai courage, euh, j'ai confiance qu'on peut le faire. Votre investiture est virtuelle ce soir en raison de la pandémie. Euh, faire campagne en 2021, comment vous vivez ça jusqu'à maintenant au Québec, euh, à Montréal, lors de la marche à la fierté? Vous n'étiez pas toujours à un mètre de distance des militants. Euh, Peut-être nous dire pourquoi et comment vous vivez une campagne comme ça euh, en pleine pandémie? Une autre raison pour laquelle on a, on a dit que Justin Trudeau n'aurait dû pas déclencher une élection dans, dans, dans une pandémie. Et aussi, euh, c'est une autre raison pour souligner le fait qu'il a promis de ne pas faire déclencher une élection pendant la pandémie, mais il a effectivement brisé sa promesse. Euh, mais on fait tout ce qu'on peut, on a des protocoles, comme vous avez vu, que je porte mon, mon masque tout le temps quand je suis dehors. Même je suis dehors, mais parce que je sais que les gens, peut-être, vont, euh, vont être près de moi. Donc, je suis vacciné avec euh, deux doses et euh, toute mon équipe est vaccinée aussi avec deux doses. Et aussi, euh, on porte des masques tout le temps. Donc, on essaie euh, de suivre tous les conseils d'experts de, de santé publique. Et euh, on est toujours ouvert euh, à améliorer notre approche avec euh, des guides, euh, des conseils qu'on reçoit. You're different than Justin Trudeau. How are you different than Justin Trudeau if you're not giving specifics on what you'll do differently? So, with respect to a company like Nova, we said really clearly what we need to do is have a really aggressive strategy around supporting these companies to expand domestically, making sure that companies that produce material that is necessary, like PPE, that they're able to expand within Canada and also supporting them to expand outside of Canada. We also want to make sure that we have investments that we use federal dollars to invest in companies to encourage that in that, that production of essential things like PPE in Canada. Uh, we need to make sure that we are stopping the foreign takeover that happens often when we've got can, local Canadian companies that then are, are taken over. Foreign takeovers allow these companies to be bought out and then shipped offshores and we lose those jobs and we lose that manufacturing capacity so we would uh, prevent that from happening. What, what our approach is one is of making sure we do everything possible to invest in businesses in Canada, support them, uh, and, and a different approach from what we've seen in the past number of decades where the Liberals and Conservatives didn't even have the desire to keep manufacturing in Canada. They were very much of the line that globalism is fine, we don't have to worry about local manufacturing, we can allow it to go offshore. Really it's the will. We often see in politics if you desire something to happen, it will happen. When Justin Trudeau wanted to help out the banks, he immediately put forward billions of dollars of support to help out the big banks, but didn't have a plan in place for small businesses, didn't have a plan in place for manufacturing in Canada. So it's a lot of the decisions that are made by governments are based on the will, and my will is to invest in local companies, to support Canadians, and in our times of need to have the capacity to produce and manufacture in Canada. More specifically on British Columbia, what is your offer to people in this province, seeing as how there are a number of very tight freeway races? Why do you think you have a realistic shot, and what are you offering to people here that is different from 2019, where you couldn't pick up seats? Well, a couple of things different. We know that in this really difficult time, we can point to real victories that we were able to win for people, and we made people's lives better. No other opposition party can point to successive victories that actually improve people's lives the way we can. When people were struggling to deal with the pandemic and were having a hard time, we were the ones that fought to double serve. We made that happen. And 8 million Canadians were able to receive $1,000 more a month because we were there to fight for them. That's people in British Columbia, that's people across Canada. When companies were struggling with keeping their workers hired and workers were worried about losing their jobs, the Liberals started off the wage subsidy at 10%. Those new Democrats have fought to increase that to 75%. And in doing so, we saved millions of jobs. So the people of British Columbia directly felt the impact of, of new Democrats fighting for them. But really the question comes down to in this election, 
we let Justin Trudeau continue to give the, the super wealthy companies like Amazon a free ride, companies that make money off the backs of Canadians but pay virtually no taxes here. Local Canadian companies pay their fair share. It shouldn't be that a foreign company gets to get away with not paying their fair share. We are the only party clearly stating we will make sure the, the Amazons of the world pay their fair share and we can invest that into local businesses, into people. Without New Democrats, it will not happen. Donc, euh, ce qu'on peut montrer ici en économie britannique, mais aussi à travers les pays, on a un bilan. On peut montrer comment les néo-démocrates ont amélioré la vie des gens pendant cette pandémie. C'était nous qui ont doublé la PCU, c'était nous qui ont augmenté la subvention salariale. Et en faisant ça, on a sauvé des millions d'emplois, on a aidé des millions de Canadiens et Canadiens de rester chez eux. Et pour la relance, pour l'avenir, la grande question, c'est... On a vu que Justin Trudeau a effectivement laissé les grandes entreprises internationales de, de gagner des profits records sans payer le juste part. On est le seul parti qui dit clairement qu'on va s'assurer que les autres riches payent le juste part pour investir dans les entreprises locaux, comme ici, et pour aider les gens. On est le seul parti qui a cette réponse et qui va vraiment aider les gens. It's really heartbreaking with uh, religious minorities in Afghanistan who are directly at threat. Our allies are at threat and their lives are at threat. We've already seen translators and, and allies that work with Canadian forces that are, have already lost their lives. We also know that religious minorities in Afghanistan will be persecuted. So there's particularly a uh, population of Sikhs as well as Hindus that are at risk right now in Afghanistan. And for a long time, many people have been raising voices about these, these deep concerns. And Justin Trudeau has ignored those concerns for a long time. He could have acted a lot sooner, and now we're at the 11th hour, and it is very desperate. So we've got to continue to do everything possible to, to make sure people that are fleeing this danger, this real threat to their lives, are evacuated. We need to work with our allies to do everything possible. But it is really, really troubling to me that because Justin Trudeau waited so long, the situation is a lot worse. Are you suggesting more than 20,000 we should bring here in Canada? Uh, we need to do whatever thing we can to help uh, people evacuate from this real serious humanitarian crisis. And uh, particularly given that there are a number of people that were, that were allies to Canadian forces that provided help, they absolutely need to be, be relocated and evacuated. And we know that there are a lot of religious minorities that are also fearing for their lives right now. We have to step up. I just have a quick follow-up sure. on Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. You said you called the, the Taliban a, a terrorist organization, mm -hmm. but we can talk with the Taliban leadership at all. Should there be conditions set for diplomatic conversations? Right now, it's clear that this is a terrorist organization and that they are they are literally terrorizing a population. And, and so my position is uh, it's a terrorist group. It's not a legitimate government. This is a group that is instilling fear and putting people's lives at risk, and it is not a group that we should be working with. Next question, we'll go on to you. Uh, the question is the Brazilian function. If you have any questions, if you have any questions, please use the function of the Brazilian. We have a question from Rafael Pirou, from the Agence Pirou. Hello, Rafael, are you on the phone? On va revenir, on va passer à la prochaine question, puis on va, on va revenir dans deux petites secondes. Euh, la prochaine question, on a mis à une crête de le devoir. Bonjour, M. Singh. Bonjour. Euh, J'aimerais savoir, euh, au Québec, est-ce que vous pensez que le gouvernement fédéral devrait financer une partie du 
troisième lien de ce pont entre Québec et Lévis? Merci pour la question. Donc, euh, euh, ce qu'on a dit avec euh, les investissements pour l'avenir, c'est qu'on doit investir dans l'infrastructure et euh, pour euh, faire face à la crise climatique. Donc, ce sont nos, nos priorités, nos critères pour l'investissement. Je sais que la question de troisième ligne, c'est toujours une, une, une grande question. Et, et il y a des questions sur l'impact sur l'environnement et, et ce sont des questions que le Québec va régler. Mais euh, ce qu'on doit faire comme euh, investissement, c'est clair qu'on fait face à une grande, une grande crise avec euh, la, change, la change climatique. Donc, euh, on doit cibler nos efforts pour euh, créer des emplois, des emplois de qualité, et aussi d'investir dans les infrastructures qui nous aident dans la lutte contre la crise climatique. Donc, si je comprends bien, vous jugez que ce projet-là de troisième lien... Euh créerait davantage de pollution, si je comprends bien votre réponse. À, à ce moment, je sais qu'il y, y a toujours des questions sur l'impact euh, et les questions sur l'impact euh, sur l'environnement et pour la communauté ne sont pas réglées, mais je donne mes critères pour, euh, pour euh, les investissements en général. Je pense qu'on doit investir dans l'infrastructure pour créer des emplois, c'est important, d'aider les communautés, d'aider les provinces et territoires avec ces investissements. Mais aussi, c'est important pour tout le monde, je sais que les Québécois et les Québécoises sont tellement inquiets par la crise climatique et on doit investir dans l'infrastructure qui nous aide à faire face à cette crise. OK, on va se rassayer avec Raphaël Thibault de l'Agence Crioli. Merci, this concludes our press conference. Merci, thanks so much. I really appreciate everyone being here. Thank you. And everybody's hang tight. I want to say thank you all of you for us. Thank you. 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 Thank